So today's um, little job is um, I've got this brake piston cylinder uh, and the top cover, which is this part, actually needs to look this shape. So we've got um, mounting holes on each side so it can mount to the uh, bracket, which is yet to be made. It has been prototyped uh, in plastic, in fact, in orange plastic. Um, so that's how, how it would look. So you, this, um, this sits upside down or like that. So, we, so um, yeah, so we need to add on some, I guess we call them ears, onto the brake cylinder. So I'll see, see what the brass uh, strip we've got and uh, we'll get on with that. Okay, so I found some brass that's the right thickness. So what, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll square this off. This is quite a bit oversized. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get a milling cutter that's one and a half inches, roughly. Um, we're going to come in with the milling cutter from each side and create the, the semicircle. Um, and then we'll cut it in half, silver solder it, and then once it's silver soldered we can machine in these parts so that we get a good a good match to this so i think uh, i think that's that's good enough i've got plenty of slack um, so i think that's the best way of getting everything aligned and square so first job is we're just going to clean at this end uh, it's not critical but it might help with fixturing later uh, as you can see i've uh, broken out the uh, vertex um, milling chuck this time because I've I need to swap uh, milling cutters so that might also gives me a bit more nicer view than just using a straight collet and obviously it's a bit more uh, robust as well so uh, yeah we'll just quickly uh, clean this off and then uh, we'll add in the half moon shapes So uh, I didn't have a cutter that was the one and a half mil that I need. Uh, so what I've done is, is I've sort of come in with the cutter and then gone across a bit just to try and get roughly the right, um, the right shape. Okay, so um, I've sort of free-handed this on the milling machine. Kind of got somewhere close, so we need to remove a bit from the edges. So we get a nice close fit on the uh, on the top here. So uh, we'll get the, the file out and uh, see how we get on. Okay, that's the first side done. Um, it doesn't have to be super accurate because we'll machine it to the correct size later on. Okay, so that's the silver soldering done. Uh, I think that went reasonably well. It looks like we've got decent penetration uh, into the join, as far as I can see anyway. So we'll uh, have a look at that in a moment. In fact, uh, let's see if we can flip it over. Yeah, so... Uh, Looks like we might need to do a bit of machining. Just to, oh no, I think that might be flux. We might be lucky. But uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have a close look at that in a moment. But it looks like uh, that's worked okay. So more than luck by judgment, I've put in absolutely the perfect amount of silver solder none has come through to the other side so um, as you can see the, the the lid fits on really nicely on the 
on the, on the cylinder. So what I'm going to do is mount this in the three jaw and then just clean up this face and then flip it over and clean up the other, the back face. Okay, so I've got a very sketchy um, setup here. We're not actually gripping on this edge, we're gripping on the uh, flange of the stub. So it's not a great deal of um, support there. So I've had to put the live center in on the piston rod just to uh, support it. But all we're going to do is just take a light skim off this face until it's all um, it's all nice and flat. Uh, so we'll see how we get on with that. Okay, so we're pretty much level with the front face there, which is all we need to do. And what, I, what I'm going to do now is flip this around, because I'd, I'd like front and back faces to be parallel, because we might need them as datums. They don't need to come, they don't really need to come all the way um, to the same width. In fact, having a bit, bit more width there it just makes these a bit stronger, which is a good thing. But um, yeah, we'll just try and get them all to the same width overall, uh, so they're nice and parallel. So I'll just whip this around and uh, we'll carry on. So um, I've got this mounted in the vise and I've basically used these two screw heads as references. So just by eye, I'm not going mad on this. Uh, I've got those both level, so I'm just going to skim off a little bit off these sides until they're both level and then turn it over and do the same thing. Just so that basically everything's in line with these holes. It just so it looks nice. That's the only reason it's, it's not important at all. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, again, we've got quite a sketchy setup, so it's going to be light cuts again, but we'll see how we get on. Okay, so we've come off the miller now. We've uh, got these reasonably equal. Uh, obviously got a bit of a mess here because I didn't want to come into the, the circular part. So I just need to clean those up with a, with a file now. So we'll get on to that. So the last job we need to do now is to just face off these ends to size. I will we'll make it slightly bit wider than this uh, because the bracket will overhang. So uh, basically the width, the width of um, these brackets will probably determine uh, how wide we go. So uh, whatever that amount is really. I think the hardest part of mastering um, milling machine is actually just being able to figure out um, setups. What I've got here is I've got two roller bearing 
inserts from some massive roller bearings which are obviously ground to the same size to quite high precision so that's resting on that edge and that edge so that gives um, means that we're sort of pa we're parallel to the fixed fixed jaw which obviously means this line's perpendicular and I'm just clamped on that round edge on the on the moving jaw so it's not not perfect but it's uh, it'll do I think for what we're, we're trying to do so we need to shave off quite a bit of um, meat off this end so we'll give that a go see how it goes um, what we're going to do now is put the four mounting holes in. Um, what I will do is just slot them very slightly. So I'll, I'll drill them first and then go in with a, the slot, a slotting drill afterwards just to enlarge them slightly. So just to give us a bit of wiggle room when we're actually on the loco. Because um, I've, I've measured the plastic brackets but obviously they've got a little bit of give. But um, so this will just uh, make things life a bit easier for us. I'm quite quite pleased with how this brackets. Uh, turned out, especially the silver soldering, we just got just the right amount um, and it sort of fits really nicely. So, I'm pretty happy with that. Turn it over, get, you sort of get a better view of it's come out this way. So, you can see where the pistons rod's going to come out, and that will engage in this scotch crank should hopefully be about there when it's engaged, engaged and then we'll move backwards we need to just finesse that but as you can see it's quite a the, the orange brackets are quite complex but we've, uh, I think we've, we've got there now so I'm quite pleased with that so yeah anyway I uh, hope you found that interesting uh, like share subscribe Please leave me a comment, I'm always interested to uh, hear what you've got to say. Um, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.